Welcome back to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in digital infrastructure. I'm Buffy Harakidis, EVP at JSA, and joining me today we have Chuck McBride. He is the founder and CEO of Atmosphere Data Centers. Chuck, welcome. Thank you so much. It's so good to be with you here, Buffy. And you know, we're so thankful we hired you to do our PR for our recent capital raise. And it's fun to be here with JSA TV with you yeah, here at Yada. So yes, we are here at Yada, Las in Vegas, glamorous Las Vegas. <laughs> we're having fun, and we are honored, all of us at JSA, to be representing Atmosphere Data Centers, uh, one of the greenest, right, data centers out there in the United States. Yes. Uh, so we're honored to be working with you. So why don't we dive right in and talk about AI models and how they're turning data centers into power hungry factories. So that's obviously the, you know, data centers are moving into becoming AI factories. Uh, it is the reality. And what is your strategy for securing the necessary power and land positions to meet this massive, obviously unpredictable demand? And then I want you to tell viewers a little bit about your three piece. Okay, yes. Thank you. So I'll get to that atmosphere part in a second. I'll go way back a step. So started my career in automation, automating factories. So whether it was making Boeing jets or cars moving down assembly line, we're manufacturing stuff, right? And what's interesting about that is now these data centers, we're manufacturing intelligence. And it's super interesting to me that now we're manufacturing intelligence in these big campuses now. We need a ton of power. Um, and the AI models you use today it'll be the worst AI model you'll ever use again, right? Because AI models just keep improving. So it's really funny to think that the ChatGPT you're using today is the worst version of ChatGPT you'll ever use. And so you think about where this future is going. We decided, when we saw this all happening 19 months ago when we started the company, started raising capital. We decided that this was a, a land and power war, right? And those with the land and power win the war. And so we decided to go out and find stranded power in strategic locations, markets where customers were telling us they wanted to go. Um, and we're now moving these data centers to where the power is, right? So for example, our site in Dickerson, Maryland, it's 10 miles north of Ashburn, Virginia, number one market in the world. We are 70% of internet traffic goes through there, right? right? And so we feel like we wanted atmosphere to plant the flag and you know show everyone we're in the number one market in the world, it was our first campus there. And then we have other ones we can talk about here. And, and like you said, the three P's. So we call it three P's and W. So planning power permits and water. And then you add a fourth P, which is people. Can't forget the people because we have to have people to build these. Yes, without and the to people. operate them. And so. Yeah, definitely. Well, we started the interview talking about uh, you're basically disrupting yes. the industry to be greener, to be yes. the best, the most greenest data center operator, developer out there. So why don't you talk a little bit more about how your innovations in cooling, which are yes. definitely innovative, <laughs> uh, and carbon-free power solutions are addressing the sustainability challenges unique to high-density AI deployments. Yeah, so three of our campuses were on rivers, so we're adjacent to rivers, and we're able to use the water for free cooling. So we run it through a heat exchanger loop, and it's non-consumptive, so 100% of the water goes back in the river. For example, our Dickerson, Maryland site, um, it was a coal-fired power plant. So we're tearing down this old, dirty, pollutive site, making it a green data center. And we, when we started the company, we decided that we really wanted to be different. We wanted to be disruptive. We wanted to really be green and clean, sustainable. A lot of people have this sustainability page on their website. We read every competitor's page. I've been helping build hyperscale facilities for the last 13 years, and I've seen, I've been in 150 data centers. I've seen how they're all built, but a lot of these are pollutive assets, right? And they use a ton of steel and concrete, which is embodied carbon. And we're able to, with our liquid cooling loop, which is great for AI and the workloads, we're able to pull the water out of the river and put it back in non-consumptive. We're also doing rainwater capture, so we don't need any more water from the city. Um, and then that keeps our PUE super low. So we're PUE 1.08 to 1.10 all year long. And then with that, we are then less of an emitter because when you use less power, the power plants are the emitters, right? Yeah. Depending on what the fuel source is for the power plant. And at our site in Maryland, we get to use nuclear power, so carbon-free baseload energy. Uh, our, another site we have in South Carolina is hydroelectric power, so green carbon-free baseload energy. So truly the atmosphere story to build these green campuses and be different, so. 
we're, we're excited. Well, we're excited too, because <laughs> obviously you. you know that we are all about uh, greener data <laughs> and the you know future and making the world a more sustainable place yes. for sure. And I'm actually in my green today. I see that. Uh, so, and I've got my master's Augusta green. <laughs> yes. So you're definitely disrupting the space there. It's great to hear it. Why don't we talk a little bit about uh, the increasing demand for high density, low latency AI infrastructure and how it's influencing the future of design for data centers, your data centers, and what design elements are most critical uh, to supporting AI workloads? Yeah. So in my past, I'm used to doing build the suits, right? So, you know, powered shells, build the suit where the customer will give us their designs and we will site adapt their design and build their buildings, right? But in cases where we build spec and build our own design, we are right now working on our atmosphere design. Um, and with that, it's been really interesting to be here and to, you know, I'm on the road interviewing customers and saying, what do you need? Because for example, like we used to do these data centers where, like, for example, we had a 23 rack row, right? That row of 23 racks consumed 300 kilowatts, right? Now one rack can be up to a megawatt, they're saying, right? We're seeing NVIDIA 120 kilowatts a rack going to 240. And so now you have one rack that was consuming more than an entire row of 23 racks. So when you look at that, like I met with a client last night and he says, hey, Chuck, I need you to build me 24 megawatt data halls and they only need to be 6,000 square feet. And I'm like, 24 megawatts and 6,000 feet. That's not, <laughs> that's not what we used to see, right? And What's fascinating about this industry to me right now is, you know, I remember a megawatt lease was a big deal, right? We were high fiving in the hallway. Hey, got a megawatt lease. Now, you know, our, one of our first deals is in the hundreds of megawatts and our campus is a gigawatt right outside of Ashburn. And the scale of this industry is wild right now. And it's fun to think about how we're building these, you know, much more dense data centers but we get to make the building smaller. So we use less concrete and steel, less embodied carbon, like I said, yeah. by building a smaller box with more power to it. So it's a lot of fun right now and, and thankful to be here at Yada. It's been a great show, so. It has been a great show and it's great that you're having fun yeah. uh, with all the pressure to build <laughs> uh, with the speed yeah. to power here across the data center industry. Chuck, thank you so much for joining us. Where can viewers go if they wanna learn more about Atmosphere? atmosphere-dc.com is our website. So go there, that's the best place. And we'll keep live with press releases and things as we go. And uh, yeah, we're so thankful to have our big capital raise, our institutional partner to back our projects. They're, they've been great. They're called AGC Equity Partners. So shout out to them and grateful for them and their partnership. So, and thank you to JSA and great to see you. Yeah, it's great to see you. We're grateful for your partnership as well. Keep disrupting the space. We need more players like you for sure. And thank you viewers for tuning in. Uh, that'll wrap things up here from Yada 2025 in glamorous Las Vegas. Thanks again for tuning in. Stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking. Thank you. <laughs> and see you at